Pre-race morning starts with a bus ride from T2 down to T1. And as we're circling Alta Lake, you can see the fog lift off of the water. And the water was glass. Yep, today is gonna be a great day. It's gonna be a great day for everybody. Just looking out on the water was just like, yep, today's an Ironman day. Race morning. Everyone covering the last few steps of a very long journey that ultimately brought them here to Whistler, British Columbia. It took months, for some even years of training, to get the body and the mind prepared to take on the world's toughest single-day endurance event. This is the 2016 edition of Subaru Ironman Canada. Oh, isn't it spectacular? You just see so many different countries, you see all these different stories represented, and that's what triathlon has become. Uh, Shanghai, China. I'm from Bath in Southwest UK. Hola, this is Mexico. I'm from Morro Bay, California. <laughs> from its humble beginnings in 1983, when there were only 23 participants, to today, where there are 25 countries. Canadians from coast to coast to coast, joined by triathletes from nearly every corner of the globe. Majid Al Michael's path here began on a farm in central Saudi Arabia, one of 14 children. His was a childhood spent in hospitals, struggling with severe asthma. Yet there was always a determination to live. I had to make uh, changes in my life, and this is just where to start after I finish this Ironman. Dang Nguyen's journey started long ago and far away in Vietnam. As a 14-year-old, Nguyen, along with his family, escaped from an oppressive life, risking it all for a chance at a new beginning. They were among more than a million refugees who became known to the world as the Vietnamese boat people. I want to thank my parents for what they have done for me by finishing today and being an Ironman. Trace D'Andrea is an American with a very special cause. He is here driven by a desire to inspire others to help orphan children with Down syndrome. Racing today for rods, racing for orphans with Down syndrome would be an Iron Man today for them. <laughs> the professional women are on the other side of the continent, racing in the United States. For the professional men, their battle will take place here. Super Ironman Canada is one of the oldest Ironmans in the world. It has a really strong history. A lot of world champions have raced here. There is a deep Canadian field here looking to bring the title back to Canada. Trevor Wirtel is the most recent Canadian champion, winning the title in 2013. Subaru Ironman Canada definitely means a lot to me. The reason I got into triathlon was to do Ironman Canada back in 2004, and I've been going at it ever since then. So yeah, it's a big deal. American Andy Potts is considered the man to beat. Outside of the Ironman World Championship, he has won every Ironman he has entered. This marks his debut at Subaru Ironman Canada. There's a huge upswell of emotion that comes across everybody's face that translates across nationalities and cultures. And it doesn't matter your background, because when you cross the finish line at an Ironman race, it's something that you will carry with you for the rest of your life. The professional men are set. It will be an eight hour plus race, yet at the start, it is all out. I play to my strengths, coming from a swimming background. The gun goes off and I try to hit the swim hard. Just get right into my stroke and just push the pace from the gun. And then, you know, hopefully people just slowly fall off my feet. And it's a consistency, you know? Like he's always fit, ready to go, and he always does the job, yeah? There's never a bad race from him. <laughs> um, I think he's, he will be doing his race in front. Andy Potts, he's definitely the guy to beat here. It's a long day and uh, 
a lot of things can happen and I'm feeling good, I'm feeling ready, I'm feeling rested, but yeah, he should be the man to beat. He's one of the best in the world. He's been top 10 in Kona so many times at the World Championships. To no one's surprise, Andy Potts has the lead. For the chase pack, they will look to limit the damage in the water. This just one of three disciplines, the shortest in both distance and time. The professional race has only just begun. For the amateurs, it is time. It is a rolling start. Whether you are the first to enter the crystal clear waters of Alta Lake or the very last, you have 17 hours to complete your journey. Finish within the allotted time, and you are forever an Iron Man. The 2016 edition of Subaru Ironman Canada is brought to you by Subaru, Confidence in Motion, Timex, and by Tourism Whistler. The amateurs continue to work away here at Subaru Ironman Canada. Absolutely perfect conditions as they make their way around this 3.8 kilometer, 2.4 mile swim course in Whistler, British Columbia. However, for one man, the swim is done. American Andy Potts with an absolutely dominant performance in Lake Alton. Now his goal is to get away on the bike without his competitors even seeing him. Canadian Trevor Wirtel will be first to begin pursuit. Portugal's Pedro Gomez right there as well. A few seconds back, New Zealand's Callum Millward and Switzerland's Mike Agros. Potts ready on the bike. It will come as no surprise to the other pros, but still, their deficit to Potts is significant and concerning. Andy Potts completes the swim in 47 minutes, three seconds. An impressive time, but it is the nearly three minute advantage over his nearest competitors that matters most. After a relatively short section along the famous Sea to Sky Highway, the athletes turn off and begin the climb up Callahan Valley Road. By the time they reach the summit, they will be at their highest elevation of the day. It is a grueling 13 kilometer climb. And near the top sits the Timex Supreme bonus. Andy Potts is on his way there. As soon as we hit the climb, my mind is thinking, you know, my bike is light, I've got the right gear, and I've got a great power to weight ratio going for me. And so this is an opportunity for me, every pedal stroke to gain time on my competition. So on that whole climb up through the Timex bonus, I, I was thinking just put, try to put time on people, try to put time on them. With a black tusk in the background, the chase pack continues to battle each other. However, they continue to lose time to the leader as well. Another minute back, just over four minutes off the pace, Canadian Elliot Holtham. Worst thing you could do is Andy Pond starts riding up the front on you, uh, you know, panic and start riding harder. It's a recipe for disaster. You gotta stick to your game and it doesn't matter who's winning until the last kilometer. Back at Algele, the amateurs have taken over. With one discipline down, the focus turns to the next challenge. 180 kilometers or 112 miles, metric or imperial, either way, it's a very long way. I have a good swim, ready for the ride now. Everyone here has their reason for taking on this grueling event. This is one man's story.
My name is Deng Nguyen. I want to do the Iron Man as a way to say thank to my parents who have given up a lot to give me the life that I have today and to have the courage of making the decision to escape from Vietnam. I was uh, growing up in Vietnam between 1966 and 1980. I remember it was wartime, so we couldn't travel out of Saigon. You could see every day there was a school that got rocketed. And in the last month before the fall of Saigon, you began to see the war moving into the city. My father was in the army during that time. So um, anyone who had association with the South Vietnamese government didn't get treated right. And it was very hard for us to go through during that time. And that was when my father decided that we would take the risk of our lives to escape. If succeeded, their kids would have a better future. If failed, we could all die. He planned this with his family for about uh, two years already. So some of my cousins went down to the fishing village and started a fishing business. So we had a fishing boat. My family is a, a family of seven, uh, but on the boat, uh, we had between 35, 40 people. The fishing boats have a lot of ice in the hold so that they can go fish for a couple of weeks. So that day, there was only one layer of ice blocks. So we got into the big boat and hid under the ice for probably about 10 hours. As we got out to sea, um, probably two, three days later, we began to have navigation problem. We got lost. Third night, um, we saw a very bright horizon. And we said, that's land. And it turned out to be oil rigs um, on the ocean. And so when you got to that point, you were desperate and you were sad that you just lost the entire day going nowhere. About a day later, we got into a very rough sea and we saw the German ship and they refused to take any refugees during that time. Luckily for us, at that time, the weather turned really nasty. We knew that we would not make it through the storm. So we decided to turn around and just follow the ship and just say, help us. And so at that time, they decided to pick us up. From then, they dropped us off at the um, refugee island called Pulau Bidong in Malaysia. Um, we were there for about six months. Luckily for us, we knew a friend in Adelaide, South Australia, and St. Ignatius Church sponsored our family. After I finished college, I asked my mom and dad to just allow me to go off for a year or two to just know the world. And uh, that was almost 30 years ago and I've never been back. I had this dream of doing the Iron Man um, six, seven years ago. And I always told myself that I could not do it. I have not done anything like this before. What I discover about myself that I can do it if I can get over that mental hurdle. Encouragement and support has been extremely crucial for me to complete the training. And now down to the last week, um, they are all saying to me that, yes, Dad, you can do it. And that's what I need to hear. They're very proud of their dad. Um, and I think in many ways, um, for them to see their dad, um, realize what he has been talking about has been inspiring to them. So what's a better way of saying thanks to the people who have helped me than by doing something as challenging as an Iron Man? Um, I think that's the finishing touch on, um, on the picture that I had for my life in the last 50 years. For Wynn, it will be a very long day. He is anticipating finishing around 11 p.m., 16 hours after the race began. It leaves him about an hour leeway to beat the midnight cutoff. At the top of the Callahan Valley Road, the Timex Supreme. Cross it first, and then as long as you finish the race, 
an extra thousand dollars. Andy Potts took the lead literally seconds into this race. Since then, he has continued to add to his advantage. Potts takes the Timex pre. Now the question is who will get the ultimate prize and become the Subaru Ironman Canada champion? The chase pack on this climb as well. They've been engaged in their own battle within the group. The first casualty, Canadian Elliot Holtham. I'm not a bad climber. I'm only about 130 pounds. I'm sure I could have stayed on the group there, but my plan was always just to ride my own race. And there was a little bit of surging going on, and I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna sit back. Pedro Gomez is still in the chase group, one of several professional triathletes racing the course for the first time. I didn't preview the, the bike course, which was a mistake. Once I hit the hills, I knew that, that it was a mistake because I was not prepared for this. At the time Supreme, German Mike Tulsik is second, followed by Switzerland's Mike Andros. Callum Millward from New Zealand, Canadian Trevor Wartel, and Portugal's Pedro Gomez. They are all chasing the American, their deficit, four and a half minutes. The Black Tusk. One of the most recognized mountains in the Garibaldi Ranges of the Coast Mountains. In the language of the Squamish people, it means landing place of the Thunderbird. The jagged shape and its black coloring are said to come from the Thunderbird's lightning. For both amateurs and pros alike who have come here from all over the world to participate in Subaru Ironman Canada, it is a part of what makes this race awe-inspiring. I raced the last 23 years in the triathlon and uh, I started my first Ironman in 2008. But this race is probably the top five race in the world. I live in Switzerland, you know, and Switzerland is also mountain lake, but here today is just Wow, I, I like as a emotion because it's just fantastic color and a good energy. It's no, it's a beautiful day. Mike Agros and the other professional men are on their way down the Callahan Valley Road. For most of the amateurs, they are now spread out across this 13-kilometer climb. Among them, Trace Andrea. He is here as a member of Team Rods, a group of dedicated endurance athletes who compete to bring support and understanding. I've been doing triathlons and Ironman for about 10 years now. And when I started, it was kind of a, a mental grind and I would really be, try to be too competitive. And for the last four years since I started Racing for Rods, which Rod stands for Racing for Orphans with Down Syndrome, I started thinking differently about racing because now I'm, I'm not racing for myself. I'm racing for a cause greater than myself. I'm racing to help an orphan get adopted. What we do is we raise awareness and funds. And what we found is that the only thing keeping these kids from getting adopted is usually money. So we take the money part away and these kids get adopted much quicker. And more awareness, there's a lot of families out there that are willing to bring a special needs child into their life. If these kids get beyond five years old in an orphanage, then they get put into a mental institution. And when that happens, a lot of them don't make it. So what we try to do is focus on the kids that are around three, four years old. And right now, after about four years, we've helped 20 kids get adopted. When I tie it to my son, and when I share the story about Anthony and how he is all about love. <laughs> when people get a chance to meet Anthony, they quickly understand why I'm passionate about being involved with Rod. They immediately feel connected and they, will, they want to help. Every day he amazes us for what he's been able to accomplish, from uh, getting involved 
on the basketball team. Uh, he's on the track team, uh, flag football, and he loves to swim. This past swim meet, he cranked out that 100 butterfly, and it was, it was just pretty special. The last two years, he's been able to do uh, two kids triathlons. So we're just so blessed to have him and believe in that he can do anything. We're all bonded by, by what Ironman brings us. We share this amazing sport and to do it with people from all over the world and with Rods, these kids that we help get adopted, they're from all over the world. And that's where it's a great um, connection with Ironman because Ironman, hey, anything's possible. We've raised over $500,000. And this, this all started with one man's vision. Now we have 200 members around the country. And we're not done yet. And we won't stop until there's no more orphans. That's our goal. No more orphans. D'Andrea pushes on, getting back to his son very much on his mind. This is so much fun. I can't wait to get to the finish. Anthony will be there to put the medal on me. Further back, Dang Nguyen, a former refugee from Vietnam, works away. His just being here is really a tribute to what can transpire when people are given a second chance, a helping hand. Push towards the finish line goes on. When you're at the pointy end of the race in the front, it is a little lonely, but it's also really encouraging. You get a lot of motivation from leading the race. Potts has good reason to feel encouraged. He is now more than six minutes clear of his nearest rival. With more than half the ride remaining, if the trend continues on the bike, it could turn into a battle for second among the other professional men. In the chase pack, it has become as much a mental game as a physical one. The lighter athletes surging on the climbs. Others pushing through the downhill sections. Everyone looking to trash the legs of their competitors without decimating their own race. And all the while staying aware of what is often referred to as the fourth discipline, nutrition. There are critical moments in any race. Often the challenge is recognizing one for what it is. Trevor Wartell is vulnerable. The former Subaru Ironman Canada champion has let a gap open up. Mike Tulsik and Mike Egros. The German and the Swiss. Together they will try and make this mean something. However, the opportunity is gone. Wartell has bridged back up. The group will stay together for now. Still hours remain on the bike before they even get to the marathon. The 2016 edition of Subaru Ironman Canada is brought to you by Subaru. Confidence in motion. Active, with you every stroke, pedal, and step of the way. And the Resort Municipality of Whistler. Picture perfect day. And so far, race perfection for Andy Potts. The American went right to the front of the swim, built a three minute lead in the water, and even more on the bike. With Andy Potts so far ahead, it, it, it became a very uh, tactic race. Uh, I could see people around me mostly looking at each other, uh, and at some point I just said, we're losing a lot of time. At the Pemberton Flats, a chance for Potts to see his pursuers. For the chase back, it has been hours since they have seen the leader. It is a brief meeting that will confirm their fears. Andy Potts is adding time with nearly every pedal stroke and showing no signs of slowing down. His advantage, more than eight minutes. It's really nice leading and then being able to kind of influence the race and dictate the tempo how I want it to be. 
I was proactive in my racing and that made my competition be reactive. And it's a lot harder to be reactive than proactive. Everyone's playing the patience game right now. There's a lot of riding though. That last 40 k is very hard. Pedro Gomez, with a pass heading back towards the town of Pemberton, it forces Mike Agros to hold back until he drops out of the draft zone. Picking up an infraction would make any chance of finishing on the podium very unlikely. Gomez with the pass on Twilsec as well, as the Portuguese triathlete moves into third. As the surges continue within the chase pack, Elliot Holtham sticks with his own game plan. He has the chase group within his sights, still around 90 seconds back. No one has the experience on this course that Trevor Wartell has. The former champion has gone to the front, and he is trying to break this group apart. Pedro Gomez has covered the move. However, the others are beginning to lose contact. New Zealand's Callum Millward fighting to hold on. To lose this group at this stage would be devastating. One athlete surges, the others respond. It has been a cat and mouse game within this group during the entire ride. Millward looked like he was about to lose the group. Moments later, he becomes the aggressor as he moves through the group. Meanwhile, up front, working alone, the leader continues to methodically add to his advantage. I'm Andy Potts, 39 years old. I'm a professional triathlete from Colorado Springs, Colorado. This is my 14th year as a professional, and I started doing Ironman racing back in 2008, and uh, it's been one lesson after the other after the other. Andy Potts thought his sporting career would be as a swimmer, but it was triathlon that took him to the 2004 Summer Olympics. And following his back-to-back fourth-place finishes at the Ironman World Championship, he is now among the favorites to win that title in 2016. Every year I look to my racing and what can I learn from previous year's races, my mistakes, my successes, what I did well. In the past two years in Kona, I've had really good races and, and great finishes, but there was still something else that was left on the table. And I was, I'm learning, and I'm trying to apply every lesson to this year's race in Kona. It's really surprising. I'm, I'm 39, but I'm getting better. So until I stop improving, uh, I'll, I'll keep at it, and I'll keep exploring my potential and pushing the limits of what I'm capable of doing. So Ironman has opened up a lot of doors for me in my life. Uh, I've gotten to explore my potential as an athlete, gotten to meet amazing people, and I've gotten to travel to awesome locations, and I've had wonderful people come into my life because of Ironman. Potts is working away on the last major climbing section. While it doesn't reach the elevation of the first climb, coming at this late stage on the bike, it is pretty much unanimous that this is the most difficult section. If an athlete has overdone it on the bike, this is where it will come unraveled. As you come out of Pemberton and head back on 99 to come back to Whistler, you know, it says there's 35K to go, but it runs more like 70K to go. So, you know, you have to be prepared to, to uh, be really strong for about 90 minutes. American Justin Dare moved through the field last year on the run to finish third. However, this year he's even further back. Five minutes to the chase back, a double-digit deficit to the leader. Canadian Elliot Holtham in a similar predicament. He is just ahead of Dare in eighth place. I felt really good on the bike. I was, you know, my whole plan was to run really well. And until about 140K on the bike, I was really happy with how things were going. As soon as I hit Pemberton, I just did not feel very well at all. And I was suffering climbing up Pemberton. 
uh, to climb there, and I was like, oh, this, this is going to be a rough day. Plenty of suffering going on in the chase pack. Trevor Wirtel has chosen this, one of the toughest sections, to make yet another attempt at breaking up the pack. This is an important race, points-wise, if I want to go to Kona. So I need to be top three would pretty much guarantee me a spot to the World Championships. Wirtel, Potts, and others chasing the valuable points available to qualify for Kona. For Potts, he is closing in on the end of this fight ride that has put him in complete control here at Subaru Ironman Canada. Gomez on his way past German Mike Tulsik as he moves into third. Bartel continues to push in second place. Every time he tries to drop the group, Portugal's Pedro Gomez quickly reacts. Switzerland's Mike Agros knows this is a critical moment. However, despite his efforts, he is losing contact with the front of this pack. At the back of this group, Callum Milbert has come unraveled. He is exhausted, and he is now on his own. Second and third now pulling away. The professional men also moving past the amateurs, racing the shorter Ironman 70.3. Gomez on yet another climb. And now he is the one taking over second place as he moves past Fortel. The battle continues, with neither man willing to concede. Andy Potts has completed the bike. His time, four hours and 31 minutes. Fastest in the water, and now fastest on the bike. A marathon stands between him and yet another Ironman victory. When I see Trevor Hotel behind me, I knew that at some point he would attack. Wirtel once again back up into second, as he and Gomez continue to open up their advantage over those behind. However, they are more than 10 minutes behind the leader at Subaru Ironman Canada. It's a beautiful day for a bike ride at Subaru Ironman Canada. But not everyone remains in the saddle. Andy Potts working away on the marathon. Back at transition, Trevor Wirtel and Pedro Gomez are still together, second and third. The first thing I said to Trevor was, this is gonna be a battle for second. I took, I took off very fast, obviously, immediately out of the T2. They are just over 12 minutes back of Potts. The American has worked himself into a fantastic position. About three hours of work remain. I was like, yep, I did my job on the bike, but it's a long day. 26.2 more miles to run. Anything can happen. The race isn't salted away by any stretch of the imagination. So it was find my rhythm, make sure you stay on top of the nutrition, so no bonking. You don't want to have the lights go out, shades pulled out. Uh, that's, a, that's a nightmare. Switzerland's Mike Agros lost two minutes over the final section to Wartel and Gomez. To the leader, it is much more. Pedro Gomez setting a blistering pace early in the run. Whether his number one priority is to go after Potts or drop Wartel is unclear. But what is clear, Trevor Wartel is struggling to keep pace. Pedro Gomez has won Ironman title, winning Ironman Sweden in 2013. Trevor Wirtel with one as well, also in 2013. His coming right here at Subaru Ironman Canada. Both men are well aware that this is yet another critical moment between the pair who have been allies at times on the bike, but now are in an all-out battle. Back at transition, German Mike Tulsik has finally made it in off the bike. He lost more than five minutes to Wirtel and Gomez since being dropped on a climb out of Pemberton. Chances of making it to the podium all but gone as well. After two disciplines, a dominating performance by Potts. Wirtel and Gomez more than 12 back. Egros and Twilsek rounding out the top five heading into the marathon. Saludos desde México, que escenario? They come from near and far. Woo! 
Majid Al Michael made the journey from Saudi Arabia, a childhood spent in hospital. Now he is on a mission to become an Iron Man. Trace Andrea, his wife Jennifer, and his biggest supporter, son Anthony, spent two days driving here from the USA, all for the opportunity to race for orphans with Down syndrome and help find them a home. We're on our 21st child, which is a special number because Down syndrome is also known as trisomy 21. So for us to get to that 21st child, is, it's a special time for us. What a lucky person to be able to do something like this, having gone through all of the changes in my life to do something that I have dreamt of doing for a quite a while, and now I get to do it. Dang Win's journey spans decades, from a war-torn Vietnam to this. The push towards the end of the bike continues. Like life, it is seldom a straight-ahead journey. With over 2,000 bikes on the course, mechanicals are inevitable. Jason Labonte has a damaged derailleur, a problem severe enough that it could end his day. When some local mountain bikers came to the rescue and who have experience with this very problem, it takes a considerable amount of time, but eventually a solution of sorts. Labonte is underway. Thank you. Yeah. However, he is stuck in only one gear and he is heading for the toughest section, the climb back towards Whistler. Andy Potts now well into the first of two laps, still more than half the marathon to go, but the American giving no indication that he's going to falter on the run. Pedro Gomez is taking back time, but his deficit to the front of the race is still more than 10 minutes. So the focus once again returns to Gomez versus Wartel the pair with their biggest separation of the day, but it is still just over a minute. Gomez was able to open up an advantage early into the run. However, Wartel has experience on this course, while it is all new for Gomez. Mike Agros continues to hold down fourth, but he also continues to lose time to the men in front of him. He is now in survival mode. All the while, Andy Potts keeps moving through the marathon. He has been all alone the entire day exactly how he envisioned it. Okay, you got it. Good work. Right up to the line. Thirteen Ironman. And this is 11 Ironman Canada in a row. And I'm going for 25. I finished the bike. I finished the bike. I finished the bike. I finished the bike. <laughs> For many, the bike has come to an end at Subaru Ironman Canada. The final discipline, a marathon. A breathtaking course along Whistler's Valley Trail Network. And for this athlete, number 746, competing at Subaru Ironman Canada is everything he ever dreamed it would be. Majid Al Michael grew up on a farm in Saudi Arabia with 13 brothers and sisters. He was one of the youngest, but also the weakest. For years, he was in and out of hospitals, suffering from asthma and skin disorders. When he turned 21, Majid wanted to live. I had to change my life with just being away, like far away from everyone. Uh, uh, that nears me, like uh, the house, the family, the friends, uh, not even the country itself. So he chose Edmonton, Alberta. I just focus my health. I remember starting with the push-ups in my bedroom endless, uh, until like, I learned a bit of English and I could like, communicate with people. Majid grew strong with his new Canadian lifestyle. He joined a gym, started running. In 2012, when Majid returned to Saudi Arabia, he learned a new sport. With triathlon, I felt something. Uh, there is commitment, there is a dedication. I have to get up like very early, like at three o'clock in the morning on the bike or run. It can get up to like 40 uh, degrees Celsius. Or cycling in a country where few had seen a triathlete. Is that a helmet? And what kind of a helmet? Are you an alien? Are you part of us? And like, who are you? And like, what's your name? But Majid persevered, and the sport of triathlon made a positive impact on his life. But he wanted more. 
I googled Ironman, the toughest thing on the planet, and I want to do it in Canada, and I want to make memories out of it. Majid hopes to inspire others on race day. Just before here, someone was texting me, and like, Majid, once you finish that race, you'll be something to everyone back home. Canada is home for me. Canada is home. That's I, all I could say. On an out and back section, Andy Potts and Pedro Gomez with a chance to see each other. Potts will like what his watch is telling him. He remains in complete control. Gomez has cut his deficit to start the run from 12 minutes to nine. But at both men's current pace, he will still be well back of the leader at the finish line. Potts knows he just needs to stay steady and to take care of his body. Every aid station, it starts and ends with water and ice. So I'd always grab uh, ice, put it in the front, water on top of my head, and then to end, ice down the back. And I would actually put it in my suit, and I'm wearing a race belt, so it sits on me, and it kind of slowly trickles down. It gives a nice cooling effect, for sure. For Gomez, a little more breathing room on Wartel. His advantage now two minutes. But the Canadian's still moving well, still close enough to Gomez to be a threat. Second place hanging in the balance. Well back, changes. Justin Dare seemed to be out of this contest on the bike. However, the third place finisher from a year ago has patiently worked his way through the field and now holds down fourth. completely dominating performance as he went to the front right away and never looked back. He came to Canada as the man to beat. American Andy Potts will leave as the 2016 Subaru Ironman Canada champion. Coming down the chute, very unique feeling crossing an Ironman finish line, um, let alone crossing it first. Uh, huge sense of accomplishment. It turned into a battle for second, and what a battle it was. Portugal's Pedro Gomez answered every attack, and then made his move on the run, Gomez taking second. And a return to the podium for Canadian Trevor Wertel. Another great performance here in his home province of British Columbia. Andy Potts with the victory, followed by Gomez, Hortel, Justin Darn fourth, and Mike Agros fifth. With hours remaining before the midnight cutoff, the amateurs press on towards their finish. The 2016 edition of Subaru Ironman Canada is brought to you by Subaru. Confidence in motion. Timex and by Tourism Whistler. The rest of the day and the quickly approaching night now belong to the amateurs. For many, their lifelong dream of finishing Subaru Ironman Canada is finally coming true. For Anthony D'Andrea, it has been a very long day, but there is no way he will leave the finish line now. His dad is still out there. Majid Al-Michael said this moment represented a chance to prove to himself that he should put no limitations on life. Majid, you are an Iron Man. From Saudi Arabia, 29 years old, Abdul Majid Al-Michael. I'm an Iron Man. I can't believe I finished. I just I can't believe. Love you, mom. Love your family back home. Love you, Saudi Arabia. This is heaven. This is heaven. This is what it's all about, brother. 
The finish line continues to be a place of celebration. But for others, it will be hours before their time comes. Dang Nguyen has slowed down on the run. He is still on pace to beat the midnight cutoff time, but it is going to be even tighter than he had anticipated. Anthony is on his feet now, with his dad's finisher medal in his hands. Trace D'Andrea is on the way. The march towards the finish line continues. Cramping calves, a left knee that won't bend at all, and blistered feet. But I'm gonna be an Ironman. <laughs> it's a long day, but that's really worth it. Really worth it. At this stage, it is really more of a mental battle than anything else. Some know this more than others. For Canadian John Rag, this is his 206th Ironman. Imagine the miles. Imagine the effort. Hours ago, Jason Labonte was on the side of the road, his day possibly done, when some local mountain bikers came to the rescue. We got her fixed. I went up the last climb in one year. And I'm an Ironman. Yeah! The last mile is about enjoying the journey that I have taken over the last year. The people who have helped me to get there, I want to be able to thank them and I want to be able to give them a high five to celebrate the journey as I head into the finish line. It was a long road from Vietnam to this moment today. 16 hours and 20 minutes of determined effort. Dang win. You are an Iron Man.